lovely Friday here at Placed in Shelter with your host, Ryan Caterizzoli. As you can see, it's a beautiful sunny day here in Wisconsin, so it's got me in the baseball mood. Got the old hat, baseball shades, repping the Brewers today. Uh, we don't get a lot of these nice days, so uh, we're celebrating here. Now, I do want to start off, we've got a very special show today, and, and I hate to start off on a somber note, but I do have to show kind of a sad picture here. And uh, we got word this morning that our oldest Bernese Mountain Dog, Cubby, oh. he, is, he has moved on mm. to the great dog house in the sky. Uh, oh. Cubby would have been 10 years old in two weeks. Uh, 10 years is a pretty darn long life for a Bernese Mountain Dog. Um, the last two years, he's actually spent a great family friend of ours, uh, Karen and Buck, uh, took him out to their farm uh, two years ago when we were between houses. And then he never came back to our new house. He stayed out there. He lived with three other dogs. So he finished out the last two years there in, uh, in farm heaven. So uh, he had a great life, but I had to give him a little shout out here because we miss him. So I've got a great special show for you today. And today we're going to call it the International Update. As you can see, we do have a special guest appearing with us. And that is Miss Debbie Kopchinski, who is on our international side for sales. And uh, Debbie, why don't you go ahead and give us a little brief introduction here? Well, Ryan, thanks for having me today, talking about my favorite topic, international. I've been with Hacko for 25 years, and many of you know me as the drawer warmer queen, but I also do the international sales at Hacko, and we have a great team um, internationally who work remotely in Europe. We have a factory in China. Um, offices in Singapore and Hong Kong and reps around the world. So I think we can all be very proud that we are a global company. I kind of tasked Debbie with kind of giving us an international update. So uh, Debbie, what does the overall international market look like? I know you've got a lot of different territory and a lot of different countries that are all in different areas of this whole pandemic. So what's it look like from an international landscape? The countries are in different stages of their curve. So what's going on in Europe is very different than Latin America versus Asia. So we heard, for example, in the UK from the prime minister that the hospitality industry will not be opening up until July. Not such great news. But then in other parts of the continent, like in France and Belgium, um, the restaurants will begin their reopening process in early June. I mean, that's what we're hearing from other markets as well. It looks like early June. Now in Asia, the good news is that a lot of those markets have been up and running now for a few weeks. Um, it depends on, again, the country as to, in terms of where they are. Um, there will be implementation phases similar to the states here and stricter guidelines in some countries like Singapore versus others like China. So. William Suwandi, our sales and marketing manager in Shanghai, shared with me that China is pretty much back to normal. And one of the barometers um, that will indicate how the economy is doing is traffic. And he said, now the traffic jams are coming back. And I guess that's a good thing. Um, and in restaurants, there is table distancing in some restaurants and in others not so much. So China, anything goes, but in, co in a country like Singapore, that's the opposite end of the spectrum where everything is very strictly enforced by the government. So uh, we're seeing co countries uh, come on, uh, come online, um, restaurants reopening at different uh, periods of time. Sure. It's pretty amazing that we'd actually be looking forward to traffic, traffic jams again as being a good indicator of things I'm coming back you. to normal. Absolutely. I'm so excited about that. So uh, Debbie's actually sent over a bunch of pictures for us. And I thought these would be really interesting to share because, you know, the last day, actually yesterday, we were talking about kind of reopening and what that's going to look like. Well, obviously, some of these other countries have been going through this a little bit earlier than we are and are starting to come out of it a little earlier. So I think some of these pictures here may give us a good indication of things to come here in the States. Uh, so Debbie, I'm going to start going through here with some of these pictures. And I just want you to kind of walk through kind of what's going on, maybe where they're located. 
And, uh, and then if anyone has any questions, feel free to throw those in chat and then we'll work those into the conversation. Yeah, so I've, I've asked my team to send me some photos of really what's going on in these restaurants now. Um, and some of the images are, are Google, which they've accessed, but a lot of these were taking, taken by our team at our customer sites. Um, this one is a really bizarre one. You know, in many cases, the wait staff and the customers are required to wear masks. Well, how do you eat and drink with a mask on? In some of these restaurants, um, I, I was told by our team, there is a sterilized envelope um, into which you can place your mask, have your meal, and then put it back on after uh, you're done eating. Wow. So this is a this is a really bizarre one um, with a partition right in the middle of that couple. And here's another guy trying to eat his lunch, completely surrounded by these partitions. And the barriers are either plastic, plexi, acrylic, or um, wooden, um, or even saran in some cases. This is a food court yeah. um, that shows that the you know the table distancing that is occurring. Yeah, this is um, going on in Singapore, and it's probably the strict, strictest country throughout Asia. So when the customer goes into this restaurant, they're scanning in that QR code, which brings up a form. Um, they sometimes have to fill out this form, or in this case, it accesses a menu. They select their items, and then 15 minutes later, the um, items are, are delivered to the table, they have their meal, and then they pay via the mobile um, payment apps. So quite literally throughout this process, there is complete touchless, no contact whatsoever. Wow. Here's another one that's uh, going along those similar guidelines. And you know, that was something I never talked about in any of my talks or actually even thought of. The idea of having menus is now quite an issue, but here they've gone completely digital. Yeah, this one's really, really interesting. This is in Hong Kong. So when a person enters the restaurant and they will not accept any part or parties larger than four people, um, each person's temperature is checked. Um, they give that person hand sanitizer and in this particular restaurant, they're required to fill out their contact details. Um, and of course, they use a sterilized pen to do that. They're seated at the table. And if you can um, notice the vacant signs on either end of the table, so it prohibits anybody else from sitting next to them. Um, so what they do in this case, they have on each table this little card that's been sanitized and it confirms that this table has been sanitized including this card with a QR code that they scan again to access the menu order and then pay by their mobile phone apps so again contactless from start to finish I can tell you one nice thing about that you know as I get a little bit older some of the restaurants I've been in the menus and the lighting is a little dark and I'm finding myself having a hard time reading them. I hate to admit that out loud, but Tell this me about solve it. that problem for me. <laughs> yeah. You know, again, you never know if some of these changes are going to be lasting changes. We'll have to see. Sure. Um, here's again a, a picture that illustrates the different types of these part partitions used. Some of them don't look very attractive, but mm. you know, others, others have a, a bit of a better effect like this one is actually separating the couple again and they even have a third area that that is um, blocked off yeah right here yes exactly yeah you know, say so here's something that we've actually seen uh, anytime you go to the store you start to see the circles on the ground reminding you of social distancing uh, so it looks like they're also using that there exactly so in this scenario it just illustrates the um, standard that Nobody is allowed to congregate. Um, people are queuing up and, and keeping the social distancing rules intact when entering into um, different parts of the restaurant. Um, and this, this is something that's, that's going on everywhere. And we'll probably see this here as well.
This is a really funny one. And uh, the team was um, sharing the, the thought here that there will be no more fruit bowls on tables or by buffets. There will be no more bread baskets, no salt and pepper shakers on tables or oil and vinegar bottles, no more water fountains or water pitchers placed on tables. But as you could see, there's even spacing going on be between the fruit. Yeah. <laughs> So this one, this one's pretty strange, absolutely. And and here's gonna gonna be maybe the new norm. So in a place like Singapore, for example, um, buffets are dead; they're eliminated. But maybe it will turn into more of a serving line, if you will, where the server delivers the individual plated food, or the customer uh, in a queue will pick up their selection. So uh, it's staggered, it's spaced, the plates are spaced out. Uh, here's another great example of the QR code, but this is actually at a mall we were talking earlier. So how does this process work? Yeah, this is really bizarre in a way. Um, so the, the customer enters into the mall by scanning the QR code and taking the temperature. So, um, up pops a form, they fill it out. If they register a temperature, they're not going to get, be able to gain access. However, if they show that they're okay, they will now get um, the safe entry pass, which shows exactly when they entered the mall or the food court. So say they, they register a temperature, well, the government now will be able to track the whereabouts of this person, where they live, you know, can you imagine? This is in Singapore and everything, again, is very strict. Sure. That will never fly in this country. Yeah, and the, and the hopes would be just to track so that they can kind of eliminate where the virus generated or where it started so you can right. uh, limit the exposure. So I understand the, the basis of it, but yeah, yeah, that would be hard pressed to get every one of us to be entering and scanning a barcode and taking our temperature every, one, every time we went to the mall or, or a restaurant. Quite an invasion of privacy. Oh, this one's cute. So now this operator in Thailand is using a cute little stuffed animal bear to occupy seats as a way to promote social distancing. Here's a cute little guy all alone with his partition. That's good. That was a unique way. You know, we saw in one of the earlier pictures, they had the vacant signs. This was another great way to kind of remind people of the social distancing by taking up a space with the stuffed animal. You know, as we looked at this one originally, and, and I said, well, that's kind of crazy. A lot of people here have varying opinions on whether or not buffets are going to go away completely, or they're just going to right. kind of go away for a short time. But this I found interesting because really this is no different than a current buffet operation with what amounts to be kind of a more aggressive sneeze guard because you can still touch the same utensils, you're still serving yourself here. Um, but this example, I think you said was Hong Kong? Yeah, this is our, one of our chain customers in Hong Kong. And that doesn't quite look right to me. The customer is still able to access the, the dish. And like you said, Ryan, what if he or she passes a, uh, a germ onto the serving utensil? But that's what some operators are doing. Interesting, yeah, everyone's got a different approach. Uh, here was that Saran one you were talking about, where it looks like they kind of made it on their own. Yeah, this one's looking pretty goofy. It uh, looks like it's from outer space. Now, this one is a stand-up um, portable unit that, that can just be removed and the surface wiped down. Some of the countries are implementing uh, requirements that the, the areas get wiped down every 30 minutes, and these are easy to, to remove. More partitions at the mall. Mm -hmm. Um, for sake of time, I'm going to keep clicking here. These the yeah. next couple are just all the different variations that you have of different partitions that people are using, whether they're clear, whether they're actually, you know, opaque. Um, you can see right. here in between every single one of the tables, this is a very normal practice over there. Uh, right. And in fact, as we continue to move here, we are going to get into this was an interesting one because i never thought about this either when you start talking about what we call b and i here where you have large-scale cafeterias for workers um i didn't even think about some of the partitions and things there and this is what did you call this one debbie 
So in Asia, they call them canteens. And this is where the workers eat, the cafeteria. Um, and uh, they have their lunch. If you go to the next one, Ryan, you know, they're fully um, in, in isolated or insulated, if you will. But wow. this, is, this is the real life scenario in China right now at companies. So those are some absolutely great photos, Debbie. I really thank you on the insight. Um, one other question I wanted to ask you was, you know, what kind of Hatco products have you seen your customers using as this reopening has been going on? Well, we are um, doing webinars just like you guys are doing in the U.S. at Hatco, and we're highlighting the, um, the importance of food safety and bringing back some of that food warming theory and showing them solutions in the um, in their takeaway, in their to-go stations, like our, um, our food warmers that can be retrofitted, the use of a heated shelf in a to-go area, because they, they were just placing bagged product, waiting for the delivery guy to access it without any heat. So we're giving them solutions, holding cabinet solutions, a doorless holding cabinet solution. So these are the things that we're, we're talking to them about. Any of your last thoughts? I know you wanted to put out a very optimistic message, even though we showed a lot of mask and partitions, and we wanted to, to make sure that, you know, you had a positive side to this as well. I'm very excited to see my markets opening up. And I remember the curve. We, st we started our process behind them. So now when we hear about Asia opening up and Europe opening up, we're right behind them. And there is going to be a need for a lot of HATCO hot holding solutions in these takeaway areas or the, the pickup, as we say here in the States. So um, I'm very optimistic. And I think we need to help our operators more than ever reach out to them because it's going to be a new normal. Well, Debbie, thank you again. I really, really enjoyed the pictures Pleasure. you shared and your knowledge. So let's take a look here in the chat. I know I've missed a couple of them, so I'm going to read through here. Um, no, need single use utensils. It looks like family dining with children is now in the past. Yeah, we're starting to see that even over there, that family dining style is a little bit different. Uh, nice. Shelly, pictures are worth a thousand words. So yes, thank you for that, Debbie. Let's get to everybody's favorite part of the show. And we're gonna share my screen again for today's memes. First one's coming in again from Charlene Brennan. She's just nailing it here. The different stages of quarantine. And I can tell you right now, I'm somewhere in between this picture and that picture. <laughs> Depending upon the day, the kids might have me in a straitjacket. Uh, number two, I told my suitcases that there will be no vacation this year. And now I'm dealing with emotional baggage. I thought that was pretty good. And last but not least, from Mark Pumphrey, me, what can I do to get healthier, doctor? The doctor said, use a bicycle and cut the carbs. And this is Mark's solution. <laughs> pretty good. Well, thank you everybody again for joining us on a lovely Friday. We really appreciate it. If you are watching on YouTube, you can always catch us live, be a part of the conversation, 3 p.m. Central Time, Monday through Friday. A big thank you to Debbie for a great episode today. Ryan, thanks for having me. You are very welcome. And if you are enjoying the content, please show us that by liking, sharing, and subscribing. Thanks, everyone. Have a great weekend. Thanks, everyone.